Hey, what's up, Musers? This is John at muse for You here to help you build awesome websites without code. And in this video tutorial, I'm going to go over the glitch widget found at museforyoushop.com. So hopefully you liked that intro video. I thought it was fitting for this glitch effect. Uh, now with the glitch widget, you can have a, a full screen uh, background with the glitch effect applied to it, or you can apply the glitch effect to various images on your Adobe Muse website. So here I have the glitch full screen uh, example, and we can see we have this uh, full screen background applied to the website, and the glitch effect um, is happening with this image. All right, and then I'll go back to the shop, and here we have the preview with various images. Um, we have four different images here. We can see that glitch effect applied to each image. Uh, so it's a really cool effect. It can re really add a lot of interest uh, to your uh, Adobe Muse website. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. In this video tutorial, I'm gonna showcase where to access the widget and how to use it. Uh, so to access the widget, you simply go to museforyoushop.com and here you can click on the pop-up and here you can click subscribe to get access to all widgets and any, any new widgets I come out with for 39 a year. And here, if you'd like to subscribe with PayPal, you can click here uh, and subscribe with PayPal. The glitch widget is right here. And here you can click add to cart to purchase individually. Or again, you can get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for 39 a year. Here are a few of the features included, the preview page full screen, and the preview page with the various images. And here we have a few of the widget options and the community sections if you had any questions about the widget. All right, so I'll go ahead and get started uh, showcasing the widget. So I'll just open up my Adobe Muse website. I have a blank site here. And if you wanted to create a blank site, you could just go to File, New Site. And here I'll go to the Library panel. So once you install the widget, uh, it comes in a zip file. So you unzip the zip file. Then you double click a .mulip file and that'll install the widget directly into your library panel in, in Adobe Muse. Um, if you don't see the library panel, you can go to Window and click on Library. So here in the library panel, I'm just going to type in Glitch. And here I have the Glitch widget. So I have the Add First, the Full Screen, and the Images. So the first thing I want to do is place the Glitch Add First to the top of my Adobe Muse website and I can just place it here at the top and then I'll bring in the glitch full screen. So I'll click, hold and drag and place that right underneath the add first widget. Um, so now uh, I'll just go over the widget options really quick. So here you can enable uh, glitch in the glitch, glitch section. You can enable or disable the glitch. Uh, you can enable the blend. So the blend, um, if you notice, the blend has kind of like it's it changes uh, it adds colors as it's it's glitching kind of like a video effect and that's more noticeable when you're looking at the glitch effect on your computer but it, we can see that it has kind of these colors um, as it's glitching and then we have the scale so on the full screen actually I disabled the scale but on this various images. Um, we can see that the panels, the glitch panels kind of pop out. It kind of scales a little bit as, as it's glitching. Um, so you can enable or disable that within the widget. And then you can set the speed of the glitches. So we have glitch one and glitch two. So you can set a minimum speed and a maximum maximum speed uh, for glitch one and glitch two. And basically the larger, uh, the larger the number here, the slower the glitch will be. So um, here it's in milliseconds. So 1000 milliseconds equals one second. So here we have 200 for the minimum glitch, 400 for the maximum. And for glitch two, we have 10 for the minimum and 100 for the maximum. So you can play around with that. If you wanted your glitch to be slower, you could add more uh, speed or more time to the to the glitch effect here. Uh, the Z index start, um, I'll actually showcase this. But basically, if you add the glitch effect and you have text or content on top of the glitch effect, Sometimes that content will look like it's glitching with the image. If you didn't want that, you could set the Z index to lower. And I actually um, added a description here. Um, you can set the Z index lower to, to a negative value so that the effect goes back within the website and the content on top of the image is not affected. Um, so I'll show this as an example. Um, so here in the widget, I wrote, if the glitch effect is overlapping other elements on your Adobe Muse website, you can set the Z index start option lower, it can be a negative value. So um, so those are the widget options. So I'll go ahead and click on add file to add an image. And then I have a few images here. Um, yeah, in this folder. So here I have the image that I showcase in the full screen version. So that's all I had to do was add the image um, and 
pick an image on my in my uh, finder and then I'll go to file preview page and browser and just like that I have the glitch effect looks great so the I'll showcase the showcase the Z index start option so let's say for instance I had some text I'll say muse for you and I'll change the font I'll say lotto and I'll make it a little bit larger let's say 60 and I'll center it and I'll make the text white so we can see it on that darker uh, kind of purple background. So I'll place this right here in the center and I'll preview. Okay, so as we can see, uh, this text up here looks like it's glitching with the background image. If I didn't want this content to be affected by the glitch, uh, the glitch effect, I could just go into the Z index start option in the widget options and set it to a negative value. So I could set negative five and the glitch panels and the glitch background will be moved further back within the website so the elements on top will not be affected by the glitch. So I'll go ahead and preview. And as we can see, Muse for You is not glitching. Uh, it just stays fixed on the website without any kind of glitch movement there. And I'll go ahead and add some more content. So I'll go to kind of a Hipsum gen uh, Lorem Ipsum generator. Okay, here I have some text. This is hipsum.co, and I'll just grab some text, paste it right in there, and we'll change the text a little bit, make it uh, white as well. Actually, I'll leave it black um, here, or I'll kind of change it to one of these colors in my CC libraries. And let's change the font size as well in here. And I'm just gonna copy and paste this a few times just like this. And actually for now, I'm gonna make it white so we can see it uh, within the website. And we'll make it white and let's preview. So we have that content there and it's not glitching with the site. Um, if you did want it to glitch with the background image, you can just set the Z index start back to zero and preview so now all that content is going to glitch with the glitch effect which is a pretty interesting effect um, someone might not be able to read it as it's glitching um, but it is a, an option there uh, another interesting thing you could do is add a rectangle behind the text so here I'm gonna make the text this dark blue again and I'll make this one dark blue as well and I'll just add this white panel behind the text Right click, arrange, send to back. So I have this panel here. I'll bring this down lower. So we'll fill it with white and we'll give it a, an opacity of 80. So it's a little bit see-through. Okay, so we have an opacity. I don't want that whole thing to be glitching. So I'm gonna set the Z index start to negative five. Okay, and I just chose negative five to, to make sure that it goes back all the way. So there we have it. We have the content in front and we have the glitch effect in the back. Looks good. And we can scroll and we have the website there. Awesome. So that's the full screen version. And actually, let me just showcase that one more time. Um, this is the full screen version. You can also apply the effect to various images on your Adobe Muse website. And you can select any image. So I can, let me just switch out the image one, one time. Um, you can select any image and have that glitch effect to any image in the back. Um, I got these images from unsplash.com and you can just find these really great images. They're free, do whatever you want, high resolution photos, and they're just really great to use on your website. Um, they have some really great images and they, they're always updating uh, with new images. So that's unsplash.com uh, and it is in the resource resources section below. Um, so I'll go ahead and showcase um, how to add the um, the effect to various images. So what I'll do, I just deleted the full screen and deleted all the content. Um, so now what I want to do is go back into the library panel. And here I'll type in glitch again. And here we have glitch images. So I'll click, hold, and drag and place onto my Adobe Muse website. Um, and th these are all the same widget options. We do notice an instance number here. So for every new image, let's say you wanted to add different properties to, um, to different images, you'll just wanna change the instance number so that all the, you know, if, if one widget has different property, properties or different options, um, those options will only be applied to that image 
um, if two images have the same instance number, well, they'll, they'll have the same properties. Um, so here in select an image, I'll click on add file and I'll just select an image here. And at first we don't have a reference for how it will look. Um, the image will just fill this entire 200 by 200 uh, square and I can make it bigger to make the image bigger. Um, but we don't have a reference here within the widget container. If you did want a reference, you could just go to fill, add image, and then fill it with the image you selected, then scale to fill and position it in the center. And this will give you a reference as you're working on the site. And it actually doesn't affect the widget, but I like to remove this image uh, before I finish my website because it doesn't, it doesn't need this image filled in in the widget container. Um, so I'll go to file, preview page and browser. And then we have the glitch effect. Um, looks good. We have it applied to that image. And if I, you know, I can remove this fill and it'll still have the same effect. That fill can just be added for reference as you're building your website. So we can see I took out the fill and it's still having that nice glitch effect. So I can just copy and paste uh, this widget and I'll change the image to this one here. And we'll change the instance number and we'll change some of the properties. So I want the maximum time to be a bit slower for both of these. And we'll just set the minimum time to, to one, or actually let's leave it to 100. So now it'll be between two, uh, 200 milliseconds and a second and between 10 milliseconds and a second. So the glitch effect will be a bit slower at times. So let's preview that. So we can see this glitch effect is a little bit slower than this one. Looks good. And let's say we're, I were to uh, have the same instance number as this one. Well, this one would inherit the properties from this one. So let's look at that one. And yeah, actually, yeah, the first one inherits all the properties of this first one. So you just want to make sure that each of them have their own instance number. Um, so I'll just change this to two. So if they do have the instance number, the, the element or the widget that's further down within the website or kind of further down from left to right, um, will, will be the, will, take precedence and we'll turn all the other ones before that into that property. Um, so you just want to make sure you have different instance number if you wanted um, different images on your website. So let me do one more and hopefully that made sense. I know I kind of just said, you know, quite a few things there, but let me see if I can clarify this. So here I'll add another one and I want to make sure the instance number is um, three here, a different instance number. So let's say for instance, I said one here, and this one is instance number one. So because this widget is further further down within the website, this first one is gonna inherit the properties of this last one. So let's preview in the browser. And we can see that this image is changed as well because both of these have the same instance number and this one's lower in the site. So this first one inherits the properties from this last one here. So that's why I just wanna make sure to give this one its own unique instance number. So here I wrote within the widget as well, each new glitch effect must have a, a unique instance number. And just like that, we have three images with the glitch effect. Looks good. And I'll change the properties of this one so it's a little bit quicker. I kind of like that quicker glitch effect. So I'll just make the most, um, change the timing to be a bit faster. Looks good. Awesome. So that is the glitch widget found at museforyoushop.com. Uh, it's really fun. It can add a lot of interest to your Adobe Muse website. Um, so to get access to this widget, you simply go to museforyoushop.com and here you can, you can click on the pop-up and here you can click subscribe to get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for $39 a year. Or if you'd like to subscribe with PayPal, you can click here and subscribe with PayPal. Uh, the glitch widget is right down here. And here you can click add to cart to purchase individually, or again, you can get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for 39 a year. Here are the features included, the preview page full screen and the preview page various images. Looks good. And then here we have a few of the widget options and the community section if you had any questions about the widget. Uh, so that's it for this video tutorial. Again, I do this to help you build awesome websites without code. Uh, if you like this video tutorial, you can subscribe below. Also in the show more section below are links to other resources and links to museforyoushop.com. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video tutorial. Thank you.